Welcome to Worship with Redeemer Lutheran Church of Southgate, California. If you're watching with us on YouTube, you can also find our Facebook page at facebook.com slash RedeemerSG, and you can also find us at RedeemerSouthgate.org. Uh, today we celebrate Ascension, which uh, the actual day was Thursday, but we celebrate it on this Sunday. We celebrate the end of the Easter season, where Christ goes back to reign with his Father, and but yet he's still present with us in uh unique ways and so we have three big days coming up ascension today pentecost and trinity sunday coming up after that and so we gather together then with that in mind and we sing our opening hymn We begin today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, 
will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. The Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The Lord is at your right hand. He will shatter kings on the day of his wrath. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. God has gone up with a shout. The Lord with the sound of a trumpet. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, as your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, ascended into the heavens, so may we also ascend in heart and mind and continually dwell there with him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading for the Ascension of our Lord is from Acts chapter 1. In the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up, after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. To them he presented himself alive after his suffering by many proofs, appearing to them during forty days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heavens as he went, Behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. We speak together the gradual. Christ has risen from the dead. God the Father has crowned him with glory and honor. He has given him dominion over the works of his hands. He has put all things under his feet. The epistle is from Ephesians chapter 1. For this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that they may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his great might, that he worked in Christ when he was raised from the dead, and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things under his feet, and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, and fullness of him who fills all in all. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. (music) 
then Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple blessing God. This is the gospel of the Lord. We speak together our creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man. And was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I remember in college one of my professors said something along these lines. This is the least busy you will ever be. He wanted to let us know that, you know, I know college is busy, I know you have a lot of classes, but this is the one environment where you have the opportunity to learn and just focus on school. Yeah, students have jobs and things, but, but he was telling us, right now in college, this is the least busy you'll ever be. Students think that way. They think after four years of high school, it's over, they're, they're done, and then college comes. But there's always more. Even after seminary, when I was finished being a pastor, there was more. Even college students graduating with their degrees, there's now their jobs that they will start. The Bible has a whole bunch of beginnings and endings. First is creation. But there's more to that. After the fall into the sin, God promised a Savior. Throughout the Old Testament, God had his people gathered and there was the time of kings and there was the time of judges and there was the time when the people worshipped in a tent and then later on in a temple. And in the life of Christ, there are beginnings and endings. And the reality is that with every ending, there's still more. Until Christ comes again, there is still more more. Any good drama that you watch, maybe streaming, always has uh, that scene where it shows previously in the previous episode. If you look at Luke 24 and Acts 1, that's kind of what happens. The ending of Luke and the ascension there continues in Luke's second book with Acts 1. In Luke, we get a little picture of it, of the ascension. Uh, Then in Acts, we get a little bit more detailed. And so the reality is, for Luke to write that twice, I think it's pretty important. Now, we usually don't celebrate ascension in the way it's intended, although some churches do. But ascension is such a big deal that it's got its own day. This past Thursday was Ascension Day. Usually what we do, though, is we move it to a Sunday, and we don't really give it much thought. It's not like Easter or Christmas. It might not even be like Pentecost next week, but Ascension is one of those important days. There's a lot of importance with Christ ascending to the Father. The first thing about the Ascension, as I mentioned, is that it's not an ending, but a beginning. So let's talk about some of those endings and beginnings. The first thing is that the ascension is the ending of Christ's mission on earth. Jesus had willingly come down to earth as a little human baby, and he it took 30 years or so uh, to finally go to the cross for us and do his first teaching ministry and miracles and then rising from the tomb. But now comes the ending of that. These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their mouth, or and their, he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And so Luke is bringing us to one ending, the ending of Christ's mission. After the resurrection, Jesus had visited his disciples for 40 days and proved that he was really alive. And then he guided them up to a hill, a mountain. And it says, And Jesus led the disciples out as far away as Bethany. He blessed them. And he told them what he was sending them to do. But the disciples, I don't think, were really totally certain about what this all meant. The challenge for Jesus was to show that, yes, the physical presence, the ending of his mission here was over, 
but that there was more. And so Jesus goes on, he tells them, thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning with Jerusalem, you are witnesses of these things. Christ's mission was complete in one way. On the cross, he said, it is finished. But there was more to be done after that. Acts 1 begins, you will be my witnesses to the end of the earth. And there is another ending. Christ's message comes and goes to the ends of the earth. His earthly mission is coming to an end, but his mission to the ends of the earth is just beginning. Timothy Tennant, president of Asbury, Asbury Seminary, says, Jesus did not just ascend from here to there because he ascended into the heavens. He ascended from here to everywhere. In other words, just because Jesus has gone back up into the heavens doesn't mean that he just disappeared out of sight. But rather, going to, into the heavens, he begins his mission everywhere. And so this is the second end to Ascension Day. His earthly mission is at an end, but the ends of the earth, his mission to the ends of the earth, has just begun. We have this mission to take his word to the ends of the earth. For years, we, the, the polio vaccine was around, but some parts of the world didn't have it. And not everybody had it. And in those parts, and as in, throughout history as the vaccine was being developed, it didn't matter if the vaccine was there, the people needed to get it. And so it is with the message of forgiveness in Christ. If it's going to be helpful to people, it needs to be brought to them. Ephesians says, this prayer of Paul, where he says that hearts and minds, his prayer is that hearts and minds may be open. Luke 24 spoke of that truth, that to go and make, Matthew says, go and make disciples of all nations. Luke says, you will be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. This it makes us think about, where is the church in this? What kind of business are we in in the mission of Christ? Well, we're in a way in the delivery business. Delivery businesses are booming, especially now as we're at home and have to order online. But even in the last few years, delivery businesses are booming, and we can think of ourselves like that. We are in the business of delivering the gospel to people. And that's a, in contrast to the manufacturing business. We don't manufacture our own faith. We don't get our way to heaven. And we don't cause other people to come to faith. Rather, we deliver the good news of Jesus. We're in that business. Jesus doesn't say in our text, you are observers of these things. But he says, you are witnesses of these things. To be the witness to a, a big event or a crime really can change your life. If you happen to be there at the, the right time or maybe feels like the wrong time, you've witnessed something that puts you in a unique position. You even have the ability to change someone else's life by what you witness. We are in that business as witnesses. We have seen Jesus. The disciples, in particular, had seen all the miracles that he did. They saw that he was alive. And now they're going to go deliver that message to others. Paul says how beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news. Here they are on the mountain at Bethany. And they are told this mission. Jesus sends them. Now Luke tells us that the disciples went away and rejoiced. But there's a moment in the Acts account where they just 
stare at the sky. Acts 1 verse 10 to 11 tells us this. While they were gazing into heaven, as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Now maybe they figured he would be back in a few days. Just like he had been raised from the dead in a few days, maybe he would be back. Maybe it hadn't really occurred to them what they were supposed to do next. And they were reflecting in that and, and they thought of that. But the reality is God's plan was for them to continue to carry the message. Now it shouldn't have surprised them too much because Isaiah 49 verse 6 says this, It is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to bring back the preserved of Israel. I will make you as a light for the nations that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. Now that's what Jesus did. He came to be the light to the nations. But now through the church, he does the same thing. All the way in Isaiah, the thing, the message was there. That this light will go to the ends of the earth. The disciples needed a reminder of God's plans. And especially of their purpose. Two things are there. The question, why are you looking into the sky? And the question, what do we do next? We look for Jesus. And we can very well be asking the same question. Where do we find Jesus? Where do we look for him? What's next for us? And the question can come back to us. Why are you looking for Jesus, the answer to everything in the perfect government? Why are you looking for Jesus in your successes in your job? Even in a church building, the angels might even say to us, why are you looking for Jesus here? Now, he is present in all those things. In our government, He's the one in charge of it all, actually. He's present with you at your workplace. And he's present in the church. But he's not contained within those things. David had this very same thought. He sat in a palace. If you remember the story of David in the Old Testament, he sat in a palace and was bothered that there was no house for God. God dwelled in the Ark of the Covenant and the king said to Nathan, he, he said to the prophet, David says here, See, now I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells in a tent. And Nathan said to the king, Go do all that is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. And so David thought, I'm going to build God a house. I'm going to build God the perfect place. It's not right for him to be in a box and to be out in a, a tent. Well, I have this palace. On that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan, go and tell my servant David. Thus says the Lord, would you build me a house to dwell in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent for my dwelling. In all places where I have moved with all the people of Israel, did I speak a word with any of the judges of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel? saying, why have you not built me a house of cedar? God essentially tells David, there's no house big enough for me. Then he tells David another promise. Forget building me a house, David. Through you, I'm going to build my kingdom. Through your name, the Messiah is going to come. The nations of the world will be blessed. We have this promise. Until Jesus comes again, the purpose of your life is to be his witness, sharing the gospel through 
making disciples. Sharing the gospel with those around you. And in Matthew, he says this, again, I will be with you always to the very end of the age. We all came to faith through someone sharing the gospel to us. Maybe it was a pastor, a teacher, a parent, even a friend. But Jesus uses the church to bring people to faith. And of course, through the church, he uses his word. Many times and in various ways, God spoke to us through the prophets, but now he speaks to us through his son. And where do we find the son in his word? That word goes out through the church. And we have this other promise. As we take the gospel to the ends of the earth, Jesus' earthly ministry is over, but as we take the gospel to the ends of the earth, not only does he promise to go with us, but he covers us, he clothes us with his spirit. Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to give us power to be effective witnesses. Every time Superman would go out and and use his power, he would first change in a phone booth and come out from his ordinary business suit to his soup is a uniform or costume. We have the same thing. God clothes us with the Holy Spirit in baptism so that we don't just go out as ordinary individuals thinking, "I, I can't do this, I'm ordinary. But to go and be clothed with the Holy Spirit in our baptisms, God now empowers us He is with us always and He clothes us with His Spirit so that we are not doing this alone and we aren't doing it by our own power. Through His Word, He empowers us to do what He asks us to do. Faith comes from hearing and hearing through the Word of Christ, Paul says in Romans. The same section where he says, How beautiful on the mountains are the feet who bring good news. Though we don't think we could possibly do this, we are in fact equipped to do this and sent to do this and commanded to do this. Jesus is ascended, but now he's with us even more than before. Teresa of Avila 16th century mystic, is credited with this prayer. God of love, help us to remember that Christ has no body now on earth but ours, no hands but ours, no feet but ours. Ours are the eyes to see the needs of the world. Ours are the hands which to bless everyone now. Ours are the feet with which he is to go about doing good. You and my, I may wonder how We could do this. Once again, from Luke, Behold, I'm sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. And then it says they received that power on a few days later. As you go on in the next sections, they received that power on Pentecost as thousands of believers. In the the first chapter of Acts, we take the story that was started in Luke and continue with the sending of the Holy Spirit. We even have advantages they did not have. The opportunity to share our faith freely. They faced death for for sharing their faith. We don't face that. Now, there are some Christians around the world who do. The reality is that we don't face the same persecution they did. And even the challenges we have, our epistle uh, lesson um, for the last few weeks has come from Peter. And Peter talks to the church and says, you know, when you uh, suffer for doing good, um, don't complain about it. Now, if you suffer for, for, for being a total jerk, essentially, then that's a problem. But when you're suffering, doing God's work, Peter, First Peter says that that's a blessing. 
So we do suffer a little bit, but not the same that they did as, a, as Christianity was a new religion and persecuted. And yes, there's Christians who do suffer. We also have this promise uh, or the tools that are with us where we can use technology to get the word out. We see uh, so many ways that God's word can go out today. So many opportunities. And so we think about this. Do you like happy endings? With movies and and books, the author decides how it will all end. With Jesus, he tells us how it will end. God allows us to be part of the story Unlike a movie where you just have to accept the ending that's there. Jesus gives us an ending that is wonderful, but also allows us to be part of it. He gives us the chance to be missionaries in the world. Jesus is with us now more than ever before. One faithful pastor, O.P. Kretzman, said this, The ascension did not take Jesus away. It brought heaven near. His homecoming has made heaven a home for us who still walk far from home. And looking at the text this week, I happened to come across this poem in a devotional book. The poem's by Arlene Leela. I believe is just a member of a Lutheran church. She says, the the poem is entitled, While We Wait. We wait for you, Lord Jesus, and long for your return. Your bride is getting ready for our true home we yearn. While we wait, Lord Jesus, show us how, we pray, to do the work you've given us to show others the way. We thank you now, Lord Jesus, for the help you send our way. Your precious Holy Spirit gives us the words to say. Jesus has not left us. He is with us in a much bigger way. May the peace that passes all understanding guide our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Once again, if you'd like to continue to support our ministry, one way you can do that right now as you can text 833-356-0563, or you can give online at RedeemerSouthgate.org. I appreciate again, once, uh, once again, all, those you, all of our members who are, are giving uh, at this time. Uh, this is a tool we'll be able to use even going forward, uh, the chance to do giving online. And so uh, you have the number 833 also want to remind you a couple things that you can do maybe after the service when you watch is look in the links on this video description and check for the connect link which helps us know who's worshiping with us today so even members go ahead and do this Um, so check that out there's also a link to our email list if you're not on that please get on that and there's also a link where you can submit prayers and so we encourage you to do that as well We are going to go to prayer right now, and so we lift up our prayers to God. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs. For the faithful proclamation of Jesus Christ to those who do not know him, that through hearing the word of the Lord, many may be brought to faith and to the knowledge of the truth, 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the church of God here and everywhere, that all who confess Jesus Christ may be united in doctrine and witness, defending against all the assaults of the enemy, and eager to gather together around your word and sacrament in love for one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this congregation, for the work of the kingdom in our community, and for the resources to accomplish all that God desires, that his name may be glorified among us and his purpose fulfilled in our words and works. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the agencies and institutions through which we have been, we love our neighbor and provide for those in need, for the destitute and homeless, and for everyone who suffers unemployment and underemployment, that we may aid them in their needs and assist them to find honorable labor to supply all their needs. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the lonely who suffer the burdens of life without friendship or family, for those depressed or weary of pandemic measures, and for the fellowship of the church, that we may bear one another's burdens and live in community with Christ as our head. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and those who suffer, that God would grant healing to their bodies, peace to their minds, and consolation in their griefs and sorrows. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, we do lift before you those who are in need. And we lift before you the Pacheco family, especially Mary Ann Pacheco, and all the other needs of the, the family there. We ask you to be also with Annie Ching. Continue to give her uh, health and, and, and um, be with her in all her needs. As well as Julia Lucero and the various needs that she has with her health and, and other things. We continue to lift up all those first responders, all those people who are uh, working on the front lines. Even also, Lord, as others begin to come back to work, we ask you to continue to give us health and safety and be with all those who are making decisions in various ways. We ask you to continue to be with Marilyn. That's the cousin of Tom Aki. Uh, with her also her husband, husband Ed. Uh, with Marilyn, who has cancer, Lord, and with, with Ed, who has, uh, is on dialysis. And we, again, lift before you, both of them, for health, and also just the challenge of not being able to go to the hospital with each other because of the restrictions. We ask you to lift up uh, prayers for uh, a member who's a friend uh, or a friend of a coworker passed away from COVID. We, uh, again, lift up all of those who are suffering from this. We continue to be with um, Claudia Bernal, um, sister of Carlos Bernal, with the various needs that she has. We continue to lift up all those who are deployed overseas. From our congregation, Carlos Carvajal and Carrie Rowland, his fiance, as well as another friend of the congregation um, who's deployed and, and uh, named Dwayne Staten. We ask you to continue to be with our church as we uh, navigate these times. We ask you to continue to send us out to be your missionaries and to be your witnesses and to do that duty that you've sent us to do with your help. We thank you for your presence that you are with us always as we hear your word, as we continue to gather around your altar, as we continue to gather in our homes. For the love of godly things, Lord, that we may delight in God's word and walk in his ways, and for the spirit that we may be led into all truth and kept from error and false doctrine. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the nation, for those who lead our nation, for the end of the pandemic and for peace among nations, for an end to terror and violence, that we may work for the common good so that justice may prevail, life be protected, and truth abound. Lord, on this weekend, we especially remember all those who gave their life for freedom, those who served as, as soldiers who sacrificed the most ultimate sacrifice, Lord, by giving their own life. We thank you, Lord, that you too gave your life for us. For the freedoms that they gave and for the freedom that you gave, 
we ask you to remember, remind us of that this weekend as we are with our families celebrating that freedom. Lord, and your Lord, have mercy. O Lord our God, as we recall the obedient life and life-giving death of your Son for our salvation, we pray that you strengthen our faith and make our hearts bold, that we may not fear but address our prayers to you in all humility. Hear us on behalf of Jesus Christ, our great high priest, who even now stands before you on our behalf, pleading our cause with his own blood, until that day when we are delivered from the changes and chances of this mortal life and stand before you in heaven, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For then is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You are his witnesses to the ends of the earth. Now go with his blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Once again, I want to uh, thank you for those of you who are gathering with us for worship. Uh, we do have a Bible study during the week on Zoom. You can, send, you can get the information by getting on that mailing list where it says email. Um, other than that, please enjoy your weekend. Remember why we celebrate this. It's because of those who gave their lives in service uh, to their country. And we, we, thank, um, we thank God for their service even as we remember the sacrifice Christ made for us. 
Uh, there is no greater sacrifice than a man laid down his life for his friends. And so as you celebrate this weekend, be reminded of that. Now go as his witnesses and share that word. Perhaps run your barbecue this weekend, but share that word as you go out from here. Amen.